Hello, and welcome to the Juniper Networks Learning Bytes series. I'm Josh McKenzie, a content developer here at Juniper Education Services. And today, we're going to be talking a little bit about how networking works in Docker. So after completing this learning byte, you will have learned the basic network types available in Docker, how to inspect network details using the Docker CLI, and how to define a network and attach containers to a custom network. So Docker has a very flexible networking subsystem based on a pluggable architecture. So one thing you'll find as you work more with Docker is that when you start working with orchestrators like Kubernetes or OpenShift, they implement their own unique network functionality through Docker network plugins. These are primarily centered around enabling multi-host networking. And there's a lot to be said about that. There's a dozen or more options out there in common usage. We're going to focus today on the options available for single host Docker deployments. So we're going to keep things very simple. These are the three network types available in a default single host Docker installation. We have bridge. This creates a Linux virtual bridge and attaches the container to a virtual port, which is then attached to the bridge. We have the host plugin, which attaches the container directly to the host network. Uh, the container actually sees the same interfaces as the host operating system and none or null where the container has only a loopback interface and no network connectivity whatsoever. So we're going to focus on bridge networking because that is the most common driver we're going to use for these single host uh, Docker deployments. And this slide shows the default bridge that's created when you actually install Docker, which is called Docker Zero. By default, whenever you create a container, they're going to be attached to and assigned an IP address on the subnet range for this bridge, which is going to be 172.17/16. So in this slide, I have two applications running in containers, app one and app two. You can see they've been assigned the .2 and .3 addresses in this subnet, respectively. The bridge itself is actually going to get the .1 address. Now, for the link between the container and that bridge, on the container end, it's going to see that interface as ETH0, the first interface on that container. Then from the perspective of our Linux kernel, these are going to be virtual Ethernet interfaces. So they're going to have a name starting in VETH, followed by a randomly generated set of numbers. By default, this bridge also does source NAT using uh, the Linux IP tables function. So that's going to allow, assuming our Docker host has internet connectivity, that's going to allow these containers access to the internet using interface-based source snap. What we're also going to see when we do a port mapping to expose a container port, that's going to actually result in a destination NAT rule, again, using IP tables, that will allow us to reach these containers through specific ports on a interface on the host operating system. Okay, so now let's take a look at this from the perspective of our Docker CLI. For starters, let's see if I have any containers running. So we'll do a Docker container list. You can see I do not currently have any containers running in this environment. If we run Docker network lists, you can see currently configured Docker networks. And these are actually the networks that are created out of the box. I didn't do anything here. So we have three networks using the three drivers. So we have a network cleverly called bridge that uses the bridge driver, a host network using the host driver, and a none network that uses the null driver. We can also look at this from the perspective of the Linux kernel. So if we take a look at our IF config output, you can see our ENS160. This is my uh, public interface. And then Docker zero is the actual bridge that represents this bridge network here in Docker. You can see it's got the .1 address in the 172.17.0.1 range. So this will act as the gateway for any containers that I attach to that default network. You can also look at our virtual bridges with the bridge utils. So we'll do a show. You can see right now, the only bridge I have is that Docker zero with no attached interfaces. So quickly, before we create our own instance, let's take a look at IP tables. Uh, specifically, we're going to look at the NAT table. Now, it's not critical you have a, a deep understanding of IP tables for this example. I just want to point out a couple key things. So we already have that one bridge in place, that Docker Zero bridge. In addition to creating that virtual bridge, 
It has also added a rule to IP tables, specifically a masquerade rule. Masquerade in IP tables functions very much like interface-based source snap. So any packets sourced from this range, which you can see is our Docker Zero bridge subnet, are going to have their source IPs translated to the outgoing interface IP, and that's what is currently enabling uh, internet connectivity for any containers that I spin up as part of that bridge. Now, let's go ahead and create our own custom network. So we're going to use Docker Network Create, and we have a few options we want to specify here. We're going to specify the driver, which is the bridge. That is actually the default driver, but we're going to specify it anyway. We're also going to pass in some custom options for this driver. Specifically, we're going to name this bridge. So this will actually be the name of the bridge interface, so we'll call it at br0. We can also specify the subnet. We'll use 172.200 slash 16. And then lastly, the name for this network. So app underscore net, kind of hard to read there with the word wrap, but here's going to be the name of our network. So app net is what Docker is going to call this network. And app br0 is actually the name of the bridge this is going to create. All right, so now if I do a Docker network list, you can see I have a new network now called AppNet using the bridge driver. If I take a look at my ifconfig output, you can now see I have a new bridge interface here. So AppBR0 was assigned the dot one address in that subnet. If I look at my bridge utils output, you can see I have a new bridge here, AppBR0. I can also inspect the details for any of my networks with Docker Network Inspect, and look for the AppNet network. Uh, this is formatted as JSON. This inspect command you can also use to uh, look at other Docker objects like containers, which we'll do a little bit later. A couple things to point out here. You can see the driver we're using. You can also see my subnet configuration and a list of any containers. Currently, there are no containers attached to this network. Let's go ahead and create and attach a container. So we're going to use Docker, run. Uh, we're going to run a simple web server here. This is actually a web server we developed in a previous learning byte. We're going to use the detached option. So this will run in the background. So it's going to keep running after I execute this command. We're also going to do a port mapping. So we're going to map host port 8080 to port 8080 on the container. Then we want to uh, specify the network we're going to attach this to. So we're going to specify this to attach to my app net. And we'll go ahead and give it a name as well. So we're going to call this, uh, we'll just call it web app. And then the name of our container image. All right. So now if I do Docker container list, you can see that container is now running. Now if I do Docker Network Inspect again for my AppNet network, notice in the containers output, that now has a new entry for my web app container. You can see that container was assigned the dot two address in that subnet. I can confirm that I can access that container locally just by issuing a curl command to that IP. Helps if I specify the correct port. Yeah, so you can see this returns a simple web page containing a little poem, which if you've worked the spanning tree, you might recognize. We can also look at this from the perspective of Linux. How does Linux see this? So we can run ifconfig. So now, in addition to our app bridge, we now have a new virtual Ethernet interface. And this is the actual interface attached to my web app container. If I look at my bridge utils output, notice on my app bridge, there is now an interface, specifically that container interface is now attached to that bridge. So thus far, I've confirmed that that container is attached to the app BR0 bridge that I created to represent my app net using the default bridge driver. 
I've confirmed I can reach that locally using its local IP. However, I did one more thing, right? I actually created a port mapping so that I should be able to reach that web server by pointing a browser or any utility really at my host IP, my Docker host IP uh, at port 8080. How is that accomplished? That's through IP tables. So we take a look at my NAT table, list the rules. Got to be root for that. A couple things you should notice here. First, we have a new masquerade rule for the 172.200 slash 16 network range. We also have one specifically for that host. But now in my Docker chain, I have a brand new rule. Notice the target, which is the action here, is destination NAT. So this is now a destination NAT rule. If we look at the matching conditions, this is the source, or I should say the original destination IP. So the host IP here is implicit. You can see the port is destination port HTTP alt, which is 8080. That is going to get remapped to destination IP 172.200.0.2 and port 8080. If we look really quick at my public interface, ENS160, that is my host IP. So now we can see if I can, in fact, reach that web app using my destination that rule. So I have a browser pointed at my host IP, port 8080. You can see I can access my web app. Thank you for joining me for this uh, learning bite. I hope this was useful. If you have any suggestions for future learning bites, please leave those below in the comments, and I'll see you for the next one. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.